What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily Rewind is where we go back a week, put all of my tech news videos into one single video so you can catch up on your tech news with one single video. And this week was all about the OnePlus 7 Pro and Galaxy Note 10. We're really starting to get some solid concrete information about the Galaxy Note 10. So enjoy this week and I'll see you in the next one. Let's get into the tech news. The very first story of the day is about Google Podcast. Now, I love this app. Uh, it came out a, I don't know, a handful of months ago and allows you to listen to all your favorite podcasts right from your phone. It's, a, it's an app that Google put out and it looks like it hadn't had a web interface, meaning a website you could go to listen to your podcast. That is going to change as of this week. You will soon be able to listen to your podcast right from your web browser through the Google podcast. So all your podcasts will show up that you're subscribed to. Uh, if you are in the middle of a podcast, you can leave off right from where you were listening. Uh, this already had worked with uh, Google Homes and things like that. Uh, the, all the smart speakers that Google has out. Had, again, they hadn't had a web interface. That will change this week, which is awesome news. Next up, if you have a Galaxy tablet or a phone and you wanna know when you're going to get updates, well, here's a list of when it's gonna be a monthly uh, security update, which is a very small amount of devices, mostly the nudist um, phones. Uh, then after that, you get quarterly updates, which is a mixture of some mid-tier phones and some slightly older phones, and then uh, tablets as well. And then after that, you're getting uh, devices that will get updates every so often, meaning like barely ever, probably never, and eventually these ones will be phased out. And the last story of the day comes from a HTML5 test benchmark, and it shows off the model number for the Verizon version of the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Pro. And it kind of shows off what the resolution of the display will be on that new phone. It will come with a 6.7 inch display, and then the resolution on it is, you're looking at 1440 by 3040 P. And it's not really a huge deal, it's great to see, but it matches what we already get with the Galaxy S10 Pro. And Samsung has shown throughout the years, at least the last few years, that when they have made the Galaxy S10 line, at least the, the highest version of it, it's almost matched identically to what you get with the Samsung Galaxy Note line. And uh, great to see a, another slightly improved resolution over a previous year. Um, but not a huge deal, and also, again, it matches the, the previous uh, phone that they've just released. But it's great to see that they're going to be putting a, another fantastic display in this phone, which is, an, again, not a huge surprise. Hopefully, they'll hire, throw in a higher hertz display so you get some ultra-smooth um, uh, movements on that phone like you would with the OnePlus 7 Pro that's going to be coming out. Hasn't That, that kind of information hasn't come out about the Note 10, and we don't know if it even will. It probably won't, if I had to guess, just because we haven't heard anything about it at at this point and we're only a few months away from it being released but regardless that's what we know so far about the samsung galaxy note 10 pro let's get into the news the first story of the day is if you have select 2018 and basically any 2019 samsung tv that's a smart tv you can now download the apple tv app and what that's going to allow you to do is watch like itunes movies and tv shows but it's also going to allow you to do AirPlay 2, which is their version of you know, Google Cast. So basically from any you know, iPad, iPhone, uh, MacBook, you'll be able to cast from that device directly to your Samsung Smart TV. Great news if you're an Apple user and you have Samsung devices and maybe you don't have an Apple TV connected to your TV, you'll now be able to do that and have the app built right into your TV. If you've been waiting for the next generation of high quality, if you've been waiting for the next generation of Samsung tablets that are very high end, AKA maybe the Samsung Galaxy Tab S5, not the S5e, because that's kind of a mid-tier one, but the S5, it looks like Samsung is currently working on them based off some leaked model numbers. Now the model numbers are the SMT860 and the SMT865, which would indicate that they're working on the higher end tablets because of the fact based off of what we've seen with the Galaxy Tab S5e. Now when are these gonna probably come out? You're probably looking at something like 
I would say maybe a month before the Galaxy Note uh, 10 comes out. If I remember correctly, the Galaxy Tab S4 came out last year, maybe like a month or two uh, before, or was at least announced a month or two before they announced the Galaxy Note 9. So I expect the exact same to happen this time. So if you've been waiting for the, the next high quality tablet from Samsung just a few more months away most likely before these are released. And the last story of the day is about the OnePlus 7 and 7 Pro launch. It happens today. It's going to be live on YouTube. I'm going to link it down below so you know exactly where to watch it. But basically they're going to show off everything about the phone. Uh, they're going to release the, the prices and all that stuff and the specs even though we kind of know pretty much everything about it. Let's get into the tech news. The very first story of the day is the OnePlus 7 Pro is official. It was announced yesterday and it will go on sale May 17th. Uh, the prices for this are very, very good uh, for a flagship phone. The prices on this are for the mirror gray, you'll be able to get the six gigabyte with 128 gigabytes of storage for 669 or the eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage for 699. And then they have the Nebula Blue in eight gigabytes and 256 gigabytes of storage for 699. And then the ultimate version, which is 12 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage for 749. And then as for the specs, as you can see right here, it is a truly flagship phone uh, with a 6.67 Quad HD display, which is supposed to be A plus display per display mate. You're getting a Snapdragon 855. Uh, three cameras, which I, per the reviews, is basically the weakest point of this phone. The cameras are not that good based off reviews that have been uh, released so far from other YouTubers. So keep that in mind if you're getting this phone for its camera, you might not want to get it. 4,000 milliamp battery. It does have warp charge 30 which it charges in like 50% in like 20 or 30 minutes. Very, very quick. Uh, stereo speakers has no IP rating, so you won't be able to you know, swim with this or you're not supposed to. Other than that, again, a truly flagship phone with very good specs. And the last story of the day is about the battery size for the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 5 G. Now this is coming uh, out of Korea, of their like one of their testing agencies, and it shows off the battery. And per Sam Mobile, they're saying that this looks like it's going to be the battery, like I said, for the Galaxy Note 10 5G version. And the battery capacity on there, as you can see from the screenshot, is 4,300 milliamps. Now two things, they're not 100% sure, like I said, that this is going to be uh, the Galaxy Note 10 5G battery, but they're pretty sure it's going to be. The other part of it is that that battery capacity to me, in my eyes, is actually fairly small. I would have loved to see a 4,500 or a 5,000 5, really, I'm not even gonna go 4,500, 5,000 milliamp battery built into this phone. I think that's gonna blow people away that's gonna make you know that's a that's that's something that the note should have the note always has these or in the past had these truly outlandish crazy specs and now it kind of just has the same specs any other flagship phone has and it looks like it's probably going to continue in that trend especially if the battery is only going to be 4300 milliamps you'll still probably get very very good battery life um, I get very good battery life with my Galaxy S10 plus which has I believe a 4100 milliamp battery so adding another 200 milliamps it will add better battery battery life, not a whole ton of it, but it'll definitely add a little bit something extra. Let's get into the tech news. The very first story of the day is the Samsung Galaxy S10 5G is officially on sale today. Not pre-order, actually on sale. Like you should be either like receiving this or should be getting shipped out or you can officially order it currently at Verizon and Samsung right now. Again, no pre-order for this phone. This phone has six cameras total 5G networking, uh, comes in either 256 or 512 gigabytes of storage, and it's either 1299 or 1399 for the price. And again, if you wanna pick this up right now, you definitely can. If you do get it or you buy it and you have it in hand, let us know what you think about it in the comments down below. Next up, if you're thinking about getting a Galaxy Tab S5, which isn't out yet, but should be out in the next few months, it looks like they're going to up the base storage. So the base storage, at least on the Galaxy Tab S4, is 64 gigabytes. It looks like it's now gonna start off at 128 gigabytes. And then if they come out with like another model after that, I would assume it'd either be 256 or 512, maybe even one terabyte. But 128 is a perfect, perfect amount. 64 is still pretty good for a tablet, again, when, even when you have micro SD card support, but it looks like the base start off will now be 128 on the Tab S5. It looks like Samsung has fixed the issue with 
with the Galaxy Fold where you know there was getting dirt and debris and people peeling off the screen protector and it was ruining the screen on those Galaxy Fold phones and then it got you know ended up getting pushed back. It looks like a couple things first off. It looks like they have fixed it and they fixed it by uh, tucking the protective layer on top of the display into the body so that you can't peel it off or at least it's very very difficult to peel it off and then also beyond that uh, the gaps at the top and the bottom in, in the middle of the phone it looks like they've uh, decreased that as well which is always a good sign because dirt and debris would get in there and that would also mess up the display. Um, the other part of this is they're looking to announce the release date uh, in May. So it won't be released in May, it'll be released in June, but they'll announce the release date in May and then it should be released sometime in June. So that's right around the corner for the Galaxy Fold. I know some of you were asking me, Greg, what's going on with the Galaxy Fold, dude? This is what's going on with it. June release date. And the last story of the day is about the Galaxy Note. 10 and the colors that it's going to come in it's going to come in at least one cool color at least uh, i think so red in some countries which we'll see where it comes out in some of those countries but red and then also a pink version that will be released globally across the world and then also black silver and white and remember that's just for the note 10 as for the note 10 pro it looks like only in silver black and white now the color i was talking about that's pretty crazy in there is pink i don't can't remember there ever being a Galaxy Note that was pink. Maybe there was, but I can't remember there ever being that. So I think that's gonna be great. Um, I know the females will hopefully love that because when you think about it, sometimes the Note is kind of a, I think kind of a masculine, masculine phone, even though I know women do buy it. Um, it's to add more colors, especially the lighter colors. Um, it's a, always a good thing. And then the white hasn't, I haven't, it hasn't been a white one in a while as well uh, for the Note color. So all some cool looking colors coming out for the Note phone. Let's get into the tech news. First story of the day is if you didn't know, we talked about it yesterday though, the Galaxy S10 5G was released yesterday for Verizon and we're starting to get some videos showing off the speeds that they're getting. Now this is specifically in Chicago because the 5G network for Verizon is basically nowhere. But anyways, as you can see from this video, this guy gets over one gigabit per second. This is extremely fast, obviously. This is the type of speeds you wanna be seeing on 5G once Everyone has 5G phones and once 5G is everywhere, you probably won't see speeds this fast. I would suppose they'll probably settle somewhere in between 300 to 700 megabits per second. I, I maybe once in a while will get over a gigabit per second, but regardless, this is, this is a very new network, very limited area of the network as well. So again, you're not gonna see these speeds most likely once everybody has 5G, but still, it's very promising to see that you could potentially get speeds this fast to do what? Load a web page, download an app, download a movie, Whatever, maybe there's things we're not, haven't even thought about yet that we could use these speeds for, but regardless, it's really nice to see. And the last story of the day is about the Galaxy S10 line of devices in the United States. This is, you know, for every carrier that is coming out, T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon, AT&T, the unlocked version. Well, the May update is finally rolling out again for us. I guess Sprint users already have it. So if you have Sprint, make sure you check for it. I believe you'll already have this update. But regardless, there was another, there's one thing missing. Basically, since the April update internationally, night mode has come out for the Galaxy S10 line of devices, and now we're, it, it didn't come out in the United States, and now we're onto the May update for USA, and still, night mode for the camera is still not out for the Galaxy S10 line of devices here. I don't know why, I don't know what they're working on to keep it away from the United States, but regardless, you won't see it in the May update as well, unfortunately. Um, probably gonna have to wait now until June. And what that, what it even does though, basically it just allows you to take better night photos um, instead of it just automatically deciding if it needs to come up or not, like it does currently on the phone, it'll actually be a dedicated mode on the camera and it still is not included, unfortunately. That's it. Thanks for watching. Even actually, even before that, I know a lot of people that already have this. Um, at least some of the website have said it's not that great anyway. So maybe we're not missing out on anything, but still, it would be nice to have for sure. Let's get into the tech news. The first story of the day: If you've been wanting to pick up a Pixel 3a or 3a XL, which is Google's newest phone, which is a mid-tier phone, and it's inexpensive for the most part at that, at starting at $399, uh, you can do so right on Amazon right now. But the cool thing is, you'll also get a. Free 
free $100 gift card to Amazon. So if you pick up either the 3A or the 3A XL, again, you'll get a $100 gift card to use whenever you want on any Amazon products for hundred bucks, that's pretty amazing. You can buy two Fire TV sticks or uh, who knows, whatever else, memory cards or cases or whatever you want with that hundred bucks and that is going on right now. The link is down below. Next up, if you buy a OnePlus 7 Pro, know this, it does not come with a headphone jack or USB-C headphones. And also, it doesn't come with an adapter for you to plug in regular headphones like that USB-C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It doesn't come with that, so you have to purchase it separately, meaning it's gonna cost you $12.95 to pick up the adapter for this phone. And again, if you wanna pick this up, I'll link it down below. 13 bucks to be able to listen to your music. It's kinda of wacky that they didn't include this already, um, but they didn't, unfortunately. So if you wanna pick it up, you can pick it up through their OnePlus store. And the last story of the day is about the Google Pixel 4, which is obviously the successor to the Google Pixel 3 and 3 XL. And the Google Pixel 4 will be out sometime, most likely in October of this year. So you're looking at another, what, five months away until this phone is actually released. Anyways, we're getting some renders coming out and what it's supposed to look like. And from the looks of it, it looks like you'll get dual cameras on the back, along with the flash with no fingerprint sensor on the back. When you flip over to the front, you're gonna see dual cameras in the top right, obviously for the XL version. If it's a, the regular version, you'll only get one camera. But anyways, you'll get the cutout for the camera in the screen, just like you would with the Galaxy phone. So I'm assuming if, if this is the way it looks, that I would assume that Samsung's also probably gonna make the display. And hopefully, the display is a lot brighter than before because pixel displays are very dim and you have to turn them up really high to get them any way that, you know, any brightness that is acceptable. And then other than that though, uh, the uh, other big parts of this is there's no physical buttons on the phone. There will be touch capacitive buttons. So when you want to turn it on or lose the volume down, you're gonna, you'll have little capacitive buttons on the side there. Um, you'll also have the squeeze feature so you can squeeze the phone and it'll allow you to do certain things. The, which is in the capacitive buttons is gonna match most likely what's gonna happen on the Note 10, which is supposed to also ditch physical buttons. Also within here, the fingerprint sensor should be underneath the display. We're not sure if it's gonna be an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor like you get with the Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus, or if it's going to be optical like you get on the OnePlus 7 Pro. Um, stereo speakers with front facing speakers at that. But other than that, it looks a lot better than what the current Pixel phones look like right now. As for specs, you're looking at a Snapdragon 855 on this, and instead of four gigabytes of RAM, six gigabytes of RAM, so they're definitely moving that up and it's definitely needed. My wife's phone has actually been a little bit laggy lately and she has the Pixel 3 XL and again, it's been a little bit laggy. Unfortunately, even though she has an 845 processor in there and four gigabytes of RAM, it definitely needs the more RAM at this point with the operating system. Let's get into the tech news. All the stories today are about the Galaxy Note 10 and they come from Ice Universe, a couple of tweets that he put out. So let's first talk about the tweets and then after we talk about the tweets, there's comments within there that he's responded to that give us even more information of what to expect with this mature, stable upgrade. Now the first tweet says, Note 10 is the optimization and perfection of Galaxy S10 and the Note 9. Samsung's positioning for Note 9 or Note is stable and mature, and the positioning for the Galaxy A is radical innovation. Now Galaxy A, we're not gonna really talk about, it's a mid-range phone, but it looks like they're gonna put more innovation and styling into the Galaxy A rather than the Note 10. The other tweet he put out basically shortly after um, is one that says, DaVinci's two biggest changes, which DaVinci is the code name for the Galaxy Note 10. Number one, change the front camera position. Number two, change the rear camera position. And then let's look at some of these comments in here. So uh, he actually put uh, another comment that said, uh, Sir, so for those who are pursuing new things, you should expect Galaxy A, which again is their mid-range phone. Uh, for those who are looking for stability and maturity, please attention to Galaxy Note 10. Now again, let's check out these comments. So the first comment here, which is a top comment, and he does respond to this, it says, was looking forward to the Note 10, but 
all the amazing things you talked about last few weeks, UFS 3.0, 90 hertz display, which makes an ultra you know, smooth display. Most displays are only uh, 60 hertz. Also, UFS 3.0 is not in any Samsung phones except for the Fold, and the Fold has been delayed. And also 64 megapixel camera. He says, seems won't be featured in the Note 10. Looks like I will be passing on the Note 10 and waiting for to see the S11 and Note 11. I was upgrading every two years, but I won't tolerate app, Apple-like behavior. He responds back saying UFS 3.0 checkmark, meaning UFS 3.0 will be in the Galaxy Note 10. That is not in the regular Galaxy S10. So that's one little upgrade that you'll get. Another person put, the only, uh, the only way I see them able to change the position of the rear camera would be to make it vertical instead of horizontal. Is that true? So it's gonna be a turn back to what it looked like on the Galaxy, I guess it was the S9 line. Uh, and then you put a checkbox. So it looks like the cameras on the back will be vertical instead of horizontal. Another comment, same camera hardware cost, question mark? Yes. So it looks like the camera hardware is gonna be exactly the same and you're gonna get the very, basically the very same cameras that you did with the Galaxy S10. Definitely a little bit of a disappointment, but again, not very surprising. If you remember, I talked about this maybe a week or two ago, talking about how Samsung over the last few years has almost mirrored their Galaxy S line and Note line of phones having to be with the same specs, more or less, um, same storage amounts a lot of the time, same cameras, same basic almost everything. Of course, the Note's gonna have their own little software tweaks, possibly probably have more RAM and more storage options than the S line. But other than that, the major things that you're using on a daily basis, the display, um, the speakers, the cameras, just basic everything that you'd use on a daily basis is almost the same on these phones. So seeing and hearing from Ice Universe, who's a very good leaker in the community, say that this is gonna be a stable, mature update is not surprising at all in one bit. Now you still might get the, the no buttons on the, the phone, which would be different. So there's gonna be some little things on there, but things enough to make you wanna switch that are gonna be like huge, huge upgrades. Probably not, but from the Note 9 line, I'd still say it's probably gonna be a nice little upgrade. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe, new videos every single day. I wanna know in the comments down below the, the, the news that was broke today. What do you think? What do you feel about the Note 10? Is it gonna feel like a letdown to you? Are you still excited about getting it? I'm definitely still excited about getting it. I love, I love Samsung phones overall. I think they're very, especially nowadays, they're very stable. They've got tons of software tweaks. They're hardware personified in terms of build, fit, finish, and use. Let me know your thoughts. I'll see you guys down the road. Peace.